What's up guys, Mike here, and today we're going to be talking about NBA superstars. Now when you think about these stars, you think about buzzer beaters, you think about championships, you think about MVP trophies. But what you usually don't think about are the lowlights. So today I'm here to remind you guys that even the best players in basketball history fail sometimes. So here are seven NBA superstars who choked in the playoffs. Number seven. LeBron James. In the 2010 NBA playoffs, LeBron James was at a crossroads. For his entire professional career, he had played for his home state team, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Throughout this time, the Cavs front office failed to pair LeBron with another star or surround him with a great supporting cast. But still, the team around LeBron was good enough to win 61 games in 2010 and to reach the Eastern Conference Finals. There, the Cavs were matched up with the veteran-filled Boston Celtics. Throughout the first four games of the series, the teams traded blows and each took two wins, which set the stage for a Game 5 that was hyped as a huge moment for LeBron's career. All of the great players in NBA history have won multiple NBA championships, and now it was LeBron's turn to step things up and lead the Cavs to a title. Only it didn't happen. LeBron came out and produced one of the worst performances of his career, shooting 3 for 14 with 3 turnovers while producing a plus minus of minus 22. And these poor stats don't even tell the whole story. Because LeBron didn't just play horribly, he also looked uninterested in the result of the game. He wasn't aggressive, he didn't play with passion, it was as if his mind was elsewhere. This Game 5 defeat gave all the momentum to the Celtics, and even though LeBron produced a triple-double in Game 6, it again wasn't enough. A few months later, LeBron was in Miami and people were left to question his indifference to the result of Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Finals. One popular rumor is that during this time, LeBron discovered that Delonte West was involved with his mom. This is possibly just a nasty rumor, but if it's true, then who could blame LeBron for his performance? Number 6. Isaiah Thomas Sometimes a player chokes throughout a whole game. A string of 48 minutes where a star can do nothing right while his team needs him the most. That's not always the case though, because sometimes a player has a good game, makes one mistake, and forever lives in infamy. Enter Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Finals. With the series tied, the Pistons lead by one with 5 seconds remaining. Larry Bird has just been rejected in what should have been the game deciding possession. Only watch Isaiah. For some reason, he rushes to make the inbounds pass, ignoring the timeout his coach was desperately trying to call. The inbounds pass is a lob through the air, slow enough to allow Larry Bird to make what is one of the NBA's greatest steals of all time. The ball to Detroit. Bird steals it. Johnson, and so, after an incredible Dennis Johnson finish, the Celtics stole Game 5 and ended up winning the series in 7, with Isaiah shooting 10 for 28 in a 3-point Game 7 loss. Unlike his career in NBA management though, Isaiah did eventually turn things around and bring two titles to Detroit. Number 5. Dirk Nowitzki. After just blowing a 13-point lead with 6 minutes left in Game 3 of the NBA Finals, the Mavericks put the ball in their star player's hands. Dirk blew by Udonis Haslam and was fouled with 3.4 seconds left. The Mavericks had to feel some relief. The best player in their franchise history was headed to the line, with a chance to tie the game and save them from an embarrassing loss. At this point, the Mavs were already up 2-0 in the finals. If Dirk could send the game into overtime and the Mavericks pulled out a win, then the championship would be theirs for the taking. And so, Dirk stepped to the line. First shot, good. Second shot, this is the free throw so much. This miss cost the Mavericks Game 3 of the Finals, but still, they led the series. Then came Game 4. Dirk shot 2 for 14. The Mavericks lost by 24 points, and the Heat now had all the momentum. Miami went on to win the next two games and steal the championship from Dallas, which was unfortunate, but things seemed to turn around the next season as the Mavericks obtained the number one seed in 2007 and Dirk was named the NBA's MVP. But this time, the Mavs were upset in the first round by the 8th seeded Warriors. We all know how this story ends though. Dirk used these horrible experiences as motivation, and the Mavericks won the championship in 2011. Once again proving that great players might fall down, but they always get back up. Number 4. Patrick Ewing The early 1990s were dominated by Michael Jordan and the Bulls. 
After a run of three consecutive titles, people began to wonder if anyone else would win a title in the 90s. Then, Jordan retired to play baseball, and suddenly a window opened up for the other championship contenders. And so, the 1994 NBA Finals saw Patrick Ewing face off against Hakeem Olajuwon in a battle between two of the top centers of that era. With these high stakes in place, people expected an extremely high level of play. And they got it. From Hakeem. Ewing, on the other hand, shrunk on the biggest stage in front of the national audience. The Knicks lost in seven, which seems close, but when the series was over, people knew differently. Hakeem had dominated Patrick. Ewing finished the series averaging 18.9 points per game on a disgustingly low 36% shooting from the field. And that made the fact that this series was close even worse. Because if Patrick Ewing had played like his usual self, then the Knicks surely would have come out on top. And while other players on this list have gone on to win championships, there was no happy ending for Patrick Ewing. Number 3. Kobe Bryant In the United States, most 18 year olds are starting college, getting a job, enlisting in the military, or eating Cheetos in their parents' basement. Kobe Bryant, however, was facing off against Stockton and Malone in the 1997 Western Conference semifinals. And the moment got to him, because in Game 5, with the Lakers facing elimination, Kobe had a chance to win the game. Four, Bryant drives, pull up, shot on the way, no good. And he airballed. Then, in overtime, he took a three-pointer and airballed. And then he took another three-pointer, and again he airballed. And finally, down three with a chance to tie, guess what happened? Yes, he shot another airball. Young Kobe finished this game shooting 4 for 14, and when watching this tape, a question emerges. Did Kobe ever age? But seriously, Kobe put the airball game in the back of his mind and used it as fuel. It pushed him to outwork everyone else, and now he is retired as a basketball legend while this moment has become an afterthought. Number 2. Magic Johnson We all remember Magic Johnson, the consummate winner. He won in high school, where a reporter gave him the nickname Magic because his game was just that unbelievable. He won at Michigan State, where his Spartans defeated the Larry Bird-led Indiana State Sycamores in the most hyped college basketball game of all time. And he won in Los Angeles, where he was the catalyst for the Showtime Lakers. At the time of his retirement, Magic had accomplished it all. He finished as a Hall of Famer with five rings and one of the NBA's most iconic moments. Yes, we all remember Magic Johnson, but we forget Tragic Johnson the nickname given to Magic after the 1984 NBA playoffs. Because Magic did not just have one signature moment in the playoffs where he choked, no. He choked away the entire 1984 NBA Finals against the Celtics. To be clear, it wasn't his stats that earned him this nickname. It was his terrible execution in the clutch. In game two, he dribbled out the clock with the score tied in regulation. In game four, he threw a horrible pass late in the fourth and missed two free throws in overtime that would have tied the game. In game seven, with one minute left, Magic again turned the ball over and the Celtics won. These mistakes dominated the headlines that summer, as shown by his new nickname of Tragic Johnson and a Sports Illustrated article titled Johnson in the Clutch. Don't call him Magic, just call him unreliable. Magic did not let this ruin his career though. On the contrary, he used this newfound criticism as motivation and won the NBA championship the next year. And number one, Karl Malone. Michael Jordan's career was full of memorable moments. Times where he rose up when the pressure was at its highest and willed himself to success. But here's the thing, when people remember greatness, they often forget the opposite side of the coin, failure. Because in sports, one person succeeds only when another person fails. And Karl Malone, known as the mailman, was the failure to Michael Jordan's success. Despite having a Hall of Fame teammate, John Stockton, for his entire career with the Jazz, Malone was never able to win a championship. And while the same can be said of Stockton, it's Malone who choked in the NBA Finals twice. In Game 1 of the 1997 Finals, a Sunday, Karl Malone was fouled with 9.2 seconds left in the game and the score tied. As he prepared to take the shots, Scottie Pippen famously leaned in and said, Just remember, the mailman doesn't deliver on Sundays, Carl. And Pippen was right. Malone missed both shots and Jordan went on to hit a buzzer beater on the other end, winning game one in what would eventually lead to a 1997 Bulls championship. 
which set the stage for Game 6 of the 1998 Finals. The Bulls were again matched up against the Jazz and were up 3-2 in the series. However, the Jazz were winning in the late moments of the game and had home court advantage for Game 7. With under 30 seconds remaining, the Jazz went to Malone in the post and... Malone is doubled. They swat at it and steal it. Jordan. Open. Chicago with the lead. Yes, Carl Malone lost the ball. Jordan scored. Stockton missed a three to win the game, and Michael Jordan left Utah with another iconic moment, leaving Carl Malone in the ashes of his success. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I think the most interesting part of this is not what happens when the player fails, but how they react to that failure. Some of the guys on this list took that failure, put it in the back of their minds, and it made them that much better, while others just failed and kept failing. <laughs> But anyway, thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. It's it's crazy. It honestly is so crazy. I can't even express it in words. I'm just, every time I stare at that number, I'm amazed. And it's because of you guys, so thank you. And if you haven't already subscribed, if you want to join this movement, we're building something great here. I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button. And a 100K special is coming. I'll get it out. Trust me. Thank you guys. And as always, have an awesome, awesome day. And cue the music.